just want to start off this video with the usual disclaimer that uh, the dog ate my memory card. Uh, I did miss the first part of this video uh, <laughs> because I didn't put the card in the, in the camera actually. Uh, you didn't miss much anyway. Uh, we just checked this thing for straight and we uh, we did a cut to uh, smooth out the worn area before we went to the, to the loading table. So it wasn't a whole lot. But the story on this thing is uh, I'm standing up in Canadian Tower one day waiting at the parts counter and I get a tap on the shoulder and uh, and uh, it's a fellow I knew and uh, he looks at me and says, uh, you do machine shop work now, do you? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, my brother saw you on YouTube, he said, and uh, told me to give you a call about this uh, part for a planer and I said, that's pretty cool. Uh, so this is what showed up. Uh, if I remember, it's a Makita planer, and uh, the bearing had worn the, uh, the drive into this shaft, and uh, he asked us to do a repair on it, so uh, I think he wants the video as well. And uh, so, so far, I mean, we have, uh, we did our take well on it yesterday, and, uh, and uh, we're waiting on him to bring in the bearing right now, and uh, we'll, get the, uh, we'll get the job finished. Well, let's preface this part of the video uh, with the uh, with the statement that this two, this TIG welding stuff is very new to me. Uh, I've welded a lot of MIG and stick over the years, uh, aluminum and steel, but this this TIG stuff is uh, is a little touchier than what I what I thought it would be. Uh, problem comes from the fact that uh, I have no depth perception due to an, uh, an industrial accident some 25 years ago and uh, it's quite hard to maintain a 1 16th gap there without uh, without dipping the, uh, the tungsten and uh, and it's a bit challenging so without further ado I guess we'll go and we'll ruin this guy's uh, roller <laughs> and make him have to buy a new one probably. I suspect I don't need to mention the fact that I'm quite nervous about doing this today and, and filming it, so we'll see how it goes. If I fuck this up, you will never see it. You're getting a piece of glass with uh, here it is. You're getting a piece of glass with uh, packing tape over it. We're going to see how this turns out. Probably not well.
I think just to see how this is doing, I'm going to stick an indicator on here and just ever so gently roll it around. Uh, this is hardly a precision V block. But right now I'm getting that as my low, it's on 40. And my high is saying 43. So I think I'm going to run a bead on the low side. Probably here. And then we'll check it again. See if I can snuggle up really close to the camera now. Upside down. Stop it. So if anybody wants to see the setup, it's just uh, a quickie set of uh, V stands uh, clamped to the table. I'm using a ground, running my ground through a piece of copper here, so I don't get arcing on the uh, on the shaft. And uh, away you go. First real job for the Everlast Power Pro, so didn't seem didn't turn out too bad. If anybody wants to know, I was running about 90 amps, uh, 116 tungsten, 116 five. Uh, 20 CFH of Aragon, I believe. I got no copy left. That's bad. It's time to go home now. So we're going to turn this roller shaft between centers, of course. Uh, we got a, uh, just a quick homemade center in our uh, in our truck, and we're going to resurface the the angle on this thing. So we're just going to use a 30-60 angle. We'll rotate our truck to where we can get it to fit against our compound. We'll just rotate everything until we get a nice snug fit in there. We'll lock that down and double check. Now we'll recut the uh, we'll recut our uh, sixty degree on our uh, on our point. So our target on the other end is uh, going to be the same as the, uh, the back side of this roller. Uh, they use the same bearings on both ends. Looks like we have 549 and a half. Five four nine five. Let's check it in a few places to make sure it's uh, round and all that kind of good stuff, which it should be. Yeah, we're pretty good on five four nine five. Okay, so back off the welder, we're going to uh, turn this part between centers so we get a dog affixed with a little protector for our bearing area. We'll 
We'll get her set up between centers. Okay, so we get this set up in the lathe now. Uh, I'm just going to use a dial indicator to take any free play out of this. We don't want uh, any excess tension on this setup because we're using a dead center with grease. I had uh, set it up with the live center and uh, found out that I have a problem with my live center and side to side play so it's going to have to be replaced. So for today we're going to use the old fashioned dead center, we're going to turn it at a really slow speed and uh, get our job done. So our run out after welding turned out to be, that's on zero, we have probably two and a half thousandths on it, which is pretty good. This is a very low speed assembly anyway, so, so we'll get started at our bearing area and uh, get, a, get a good fit to our bearing. So we'll take a couple of uh, light cuts, find our high spots, and uh, work our way down until we get a full contact on this. small holiday there but by the time we get down to our bearing diameter that may be gone as well. A weld on the end is a little bit shy but I really didn't want to get into this keyway because I didn't have a cutter to recut it. Our target on this is uh, 549 and a half to match the other end. 
has to use the same bearings on both ends. Right now we are 580. Some gears. So we'll try another twenty for now. So we'll do 11, leave us off a thousand or so for finishing. Since this is our final pass, we're going to come into the shoulder and just do a clean up with it. We'll check our dimension again. Once we get everything out of the way. So 550 and a half, so we got about 1,000 to uh, polish down. Five fifty on the money, another half that we should be good. Check. Forty nine three. 
has a couple of tents under. And 549.4. Yeah, so we polished up an extra tenth or so inside, but I think we'll be just fine. So here's a finished product. Uh, there's a couple little holidays. We didn't mess up our keyway, so I'm happy about that. But uh, uh, it's not too bad for our first TIG weld job. I guess uh, you'll have to take a little easy on me for the first while. Well, it'll only get better. <laughs>